Hi, it's Mrs. Pisano. I'm the string teacher here at Lower Grove, and I'm going to read for you chapter 17 of Stella Diaz Has Something to Say. Chapter 17. I'm in the middle of reading about narwhals when Dad picks us up. The narwhal is a type of whale. People think that it has a tusk, but it's actually a tooth. Narwhals are extra special because they are rarely seen. People tried to keep them in captivity in the 1960s and 1970s, but sadly they kept dying. I only see Dad once or twice a year, and this time it's right before spring break. He's in Chicago for a week with my tío, Carlos. Apparently, they're going to some sort of convention for my tío's clothing store. When Dad arrives at our house, he's in a new car that I've never seen before. Dad always likes to drive instead of flying, so he must have gotten it back in Colorado. The new car is a sports car. You know, the ones that look like they go really fast. I'm used to this, though. Every time I see him, it's a new car. As we put on our seatbelts, he says that he's ta taking Nick and me bowling. Cool, said Nick. I don't say anything. I've never been bowling before. I'm excited, but I don't know what to expect. As soon as we get to the bowling alley, Dad says to us, you guys paying? He laughs. I look over to Nick. He's not laughing. I know why, too. Since Dad never sends us money, we never know when he will actually pay for things. Mom knows this, so she always gives us extra money when we see him, just in case he makes us pay. Nick, it's just a joke. Nick is still not laughing. Dad just shrugs. He goes over to the register. One adult and two kids. Dad opens up his wallet. I see a picture of Nick when he was little. Then I see a picture of a baby. Who's that? I ask, pointing to the picture. You, he says. I'm a little surprised. Really? See, it's you from your first passport picture before we moved to the United States. Vamos, let's get some zapatos on your feet. Apparently, you can't wear regular shoes on the bowling lanes. You have to borrow these really cool shoes that are colorful. I put them on. I think I might like bowling, I say to Nick. I kick my heels together like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Let's go, Twinkle Toes, Nick says. We walk over to the lanes and Dad enters our names into the computer. Then he hands me a few different balls to find one that I can bowl with. I find a bright orange one that I can actually carry. Senorita's Primera, says Dad. I like it when Dad says girls go first. Nick blows a raspberry. I'm all smiles until I walk towards the lane. The floor is slippery and I get all nervous trying to lift the ball. It feels too heavy. What did I do, Dad? I ask. It's not rocket science, just roll the ball, says Nick. I turn Roja this time because I'm angry. Just because I'm new to something doesn't mean I'm stupid. I wish that I were a narwhal right now so I could poke Nick with my giant tooth. Instead, I stick my tongue out at Nick. Then I roll the ball. It goes nowhere near the white pins. In fact, my two balls go right into the gutter. Nick goes next. He's much better than me and knocks a few pins over. Dad's really good. He knocks over all the pins. I don't know much about bowling, but he kicks out his leg like the professionals. Dad, how come you're so good? I ask. Well, I used to go bowling a bunch when I was a teenager. He reties his shoe and looks at me. I wasn't very close to my parents. They were more concerned with their parties than with your tío or me. Once I no longer had a nana, a nanny, I spent all my time with my friends bowling or playing pool. I felt sad for a second. I never thought about dad as a kid. It sounds kind of lonely, 
I love spending time with Mom and Nick. I look at him. I say in Spanish, Dad, could you teach me how to bowl better? Clara que si, mi amor, Stella. Of course, my love, he says. He shows me how to line up my feet with these little arrows first. Next, he shows me how to swing my arm better and finally to let the ball roll. When I do it by myself, the ball goes slower than it did before, but it go, it's going straight down the middle. I actually knock over some pins, almost all of them. Way to go, Stella, says Nick. He gives me a high five. Dad kisses the top of my head. I smile. For a moment, I miss having him around. After we finish bowling, Dad drops us off at the house. Before you go, he says, grabbing a box from the back seat. Here are new coats for the two of you. I see the tags. They're from my Tio's store. Dad gives Nick and me each co a coat. I try mine on. It's too big. It's also pink with fur. I like pink, but a whole pink coat is too girly for me. Still, I say, gracias. I look over at Nick and I giggle. His coat is way too small. It's too tight around his shoulders. He can't even pull down his arms. Oh, I guess you grew more than I realized. You're going to be as tall as your uncle. Nick just shrugs and hands him back the coat. I'll mail you a new one, Dad says. Nick looks at me. We both know that this is never going to happen. I give Dad a hug goodbye. I feel a little sad again. My dad is not all terrible. He just doesn't know better. It's like the people who used to hunt narwhals. People used to think that narwhals were related to unicorns. They didn't know that they were regular sea mammals and weren't magical. I think part of dad doesn't realize that he's not doing a good job at being a father. Then again, I don't think he knows how. It doesn't sound like he had really good, great parents. Nick and I are lucky because we at least have mom. Nick puts his arm around me as we go back inside our house. As we open the door, I smell something wonderful. Mom is in the kitchen making albadingas again. I run into the kitchen and hug her tightly around the waist. Whoa, Stella, you surprised me. I looked up at her. I love you, Mommy. I love you more, she says as she hugs me back.